everyone, welcome to Rick's Scale Model Fix and a brand new kit review. This time we're going to be looking at Kinetic Models Gold Range Retooled 2022 F16A MLU NATO Viper in 48 scale, kit number K48100. So just a little bit of history first, this has no relation to Kinetic's earlier F16 kits, it is completely retooled. It depicts the European Vipers for Portuguese Air Force, Dutch, Danish, Norwegian and Belgian in the box. And it's also a twin release with the F16C kit number 48102. Now these kits are essentially the same plastic in a different box. One's US F16C aircraft and the other one's the MLU NATO F16A. So without further ado let's conduct our box top tour and as you can see you've got some stunning digital artwork there of a Belgian Air Force F16 in flight intercepting a Russian bear. We've got that traditional black boxing with the gold swoosh that kinetic gold kits differ from their earlier ones which are in the plain blue, plain blue boxings. Now as we've already established there's a number of markings included in the kit so we've got Belgian, Dutch, Portuguese, Danish and Norwegian. Decals are printed by Cartograph and been designed by FCM so they're going to be as good as anything aftermarket, hopefully thoroughly researched and correct. On the other side we've got a brief sort of synopsis of the role of the F-16 and some CAD rendering. And then we've got some model features listed, so this one's claiming that we've got positional flaps and slats, new engraving technology for crisp panel line and laser engraving for super detail, full cockpit, full intake, super detailed main landing gear and nose landing gear bay, compatible Magi Fire magnetic firepower kinetics interchangeable, interchangeable modern weapon set. I've not actually seen that released yet. And the weapons included a fuel tanks, AIM-9, AIM-X, AIM-120s, Cs, AIM-7X, GBU-12s, GBU-49s, 24s, 31s and 38s. And we've got some targeting pods in there with the AAQ-1314, AAQ Lightning, sniper pods and an ALQ-184. Lifting the lid reveals some crisp, well presented plastic in a single bag, complete with the instructions and I'm assuming decals. So after unboxing the contents, the plastic parts were in that large plastic bag but the sprues were actually individually bagged and we've uh, got the instruction booklet out of that packaging just to take a look at what we can expect. So the instruction books are always slightly disappointing in the kinetic kits as they do just bear a resemblance to a photocopy. Opening the page and we've got the parts map so we can see that we've got a number of sprues there so we've got weapon sprues, fuselage sprues and drop tanks etc everything that you would hope to find in there. On the other side of the page we've got colour call outs cross -re referenced to Meg, Vallejo, Mr Colour, Tamiya and Humbrel. And it does say at the bottom there, for colour profiles please go to www.kineticmodel.com for download, type in the kit number and go for manual on painting guide. So construction does start with the cockpit, traditional format for the F-16 with the rear bulkhead and central cockpit tub, to which is added the instrument panel and we've got a detailed painting guide there. Hands on throttling sticks are provided and some rudder pedals and then we jump to the intake and the main gear bay which all looks nicely detailed. Just pay attention to some of these call outs because it does say which way round the parts go. So this is focusing on the main gear bay which makes up the reverse side of the intake and it looks to be well detailed, we've got the battery there etc. 
So a very similar looking design and detailing uh, towards the uh, Tamiya kit there I think. Jet pipes. So without going down the rabbit hole of large mouth intakes, normal shock intakes and Pratt & Whitney and General Electric exhausts for the different blocks of F16. This one comes with the normal size or the small mouth or the normal shock intake and the Pratt & Whitney burner cam. And that's built up for a number of pieces there and looks well detailed. Hopefully we can add that towards the end of the model which will help uh, with masking and painting. Intake, we've got some holes to open, a splitter and the nose gear bay being added to the bottom of that intake section and then a front lip going on to the completed assembly. Page 6, cockpit tub is going into the flip fuselage upper surface and then we've got some drop-in panels that just change depending on the mark of F16. So with this one, something to bear in mind with the uh, IFF aerials on the nose are actually moulded in. So if you wanted to do a really early A from any of the European air arms or even the US Air Force, you're going to have to remove those. And indeed with this sharing a similar boxing with the F-16C, we've got the beer can radar warning receivers on the leading edges moulded in, which need to be cut off and removed, so that's a bit of work. And we've got some holes to fill in dotted around the airframe. Might have been better approach there for Kinetic to do sort of a Hasegawa approach and have those as separate items because it is going to take some work to remove those and they are quite thin leading edges there. Stage 10 sees the intake being placed in and some more holes and bits and pieces being removed. Again mindful that this is a double crossover boxing and the block 42s have some small lumps at the wing roots which are indicated here as to be removed yet again. 11 sees the completed main gear bay and intake being inserted into the lower fuselage. It would be interesting to see what variations of the gun, gas, muzzle panels that we've got there catering for A's and C's. Combing, heads up display, fuselage halves being joined together. Now Raymond at Scale Model World did go into great details as to why the fuselage was broken down here. So I'm not going to go into that but it, from what Raymond was saying about the tooling it made sense to make it there and it make an easier fit for the build process. Some lumps and bumps, inner top wing, sorry inner lower wing sections coming in and the nose panels very Tamiya-esque in that approach. Bearing in mind some of those European Vipers have the searchlights in the nose and the fuselage side and uh, that is there and replicated as part G9. And indeed, it would be possible, just looking at this quickly, probably to do a US Air Force Air National Guard ADF version with the parts that are included in this box. Turning the page sees the belly and some other bits and pieces being added and the engine coming in with some bulkheads. Then it's onto more lumps and bumps. So again, pay attention to the version that you're modelling as certain aircraft have certain fit of those radar warning receivers etc. It's got the correct moved landing and taxi lights onto the main onto the nose gear to cater for the wider track undercarriage. Interesting to show that the main gear bay sorry the nose gear leg bay is shown outside of the intake which you've already assembled in this section. So it looks a bit strange in the instructions, but uh, it makes sense to show it for clarity. Main gear coming in, so pay attention that everything lines up, otherwise you'll end up with your F-16 on a slant. Main gear bay looks to be quite detailed, and we do have various wheels in the kit, as we'll see, and the plastic parts, and more intakes, etc., being added, along with the main gear doors. 
arrestor gear and ventral strakes. AC's two ejector seat looks nicely replicated and then we're onto the cockpit. So we've got some interior framing, cockpit glass and the radome. It has got a radar included and the nose cone is in two parts which is going to make the lightning reinforcing strips a nightmare to replicate but can be done from stretch sprue. Then we're on to the fin bases and again the F-16 is a nightmare in terms of what aircraft have what and it's also interesting that there is no mention despite it being included in the decal options of the ADF or the ADV version fin base so just watch if you're doing the Portuguese one that you do pick up the correct parts off the sprue. So we've got things like carapace, ECM warnings for Belgium aircraft etc and the power pack for the Dutch ones so just pay attention to which way you're going with these and make sure you follow your build as you go through. Flaps are positional up or down. It'll be interesting to see if the leading edge slats are moulded in one piece with the wing and whether they've got the neutral, I think it's three degrees upward, cant to those whilst the aircraft's parked. So it'll be interesting to look at that. And we haven't got the narrow cord block 10 stabilisers either. They are the uh, clipped version with the kinked trailing edge that's common to the C's and A's. Different wingtip pylons for the A's and C's and later MLU aircraft again. So just pay attention to where where you're going with these, especially if you're going to be using aftermarket decals. Turning the page once more and we're on to weaponry. So we've got underwing pylons, triple ejector racks by the looks of it, and various pods there. We've got sniper pod, lightning pods, yep, aim uh, sidewinders, AMRAMs, uh, GBUs, 12s, 49s and 24s, a centerline tank and a 370 gallon wing tank. So again, nothing early, which is a bit disappointing if you wanted to do an earlier version of the kit. But then the kit is designed for that MLU, Midlife Update airframe. Page 16 handily gives you a loadout chart and where everything goes across the page on page 17. And then it's onto the markings options and decals and painting guides for the weaponry and then we're into the markings on the kit. So the first one we have a F-16A block 20 of the Belgian Air Force and it's worth going on the internet probably something like airliners net and just searching for the aircraft serial number. I did that yesterday just to have a look and there's a abundance of reference showing what stencil data, what colour ejection warning seat triangles and everything are applicable to each machine as they vary massively. So it is a real minefield particularly if you're going down the route of using an aftermarket sheet. So I would really really recommend looking for photo reference of the exact F-16 that you wish to build. It's interesting to note unfortunately Kinetic haven't supplied the fuselage strengthening plates that are commonly found on the MLU aircraft. So again, depending on the era that the airframe is depicted, you may find that the aircraft doesn't have those upper surface wing reinforcement tail reinforcement plates, but then it could also turn out that it should have. Now I have done an internet search and there's evidence for these decal options that we're going to go through showing both with and without so with care you can pretty much negate having to scrounge around the likes of Hannant's and Lucky model looking for the cross delta stick on plates or I think um, Fighter Town do some as vinyl stickers, Eddard do them as etch parts, even Tamiya do them as etch parts for their kit. So Kinetic are not alone in not including them in the boxing. Certainly Tamiya don't include it in their Block 50s kits either. But it would have been nice just to have some vinyl stickers because they are quite noticeable and a characteristic feature of the F-16. So from memory this aircraft does require the reinforcement plates for the time frame depicted. 
turning the page and we've got a Dutch or Netherlands uh, airframe and again this one does require the strengthening plates uh, certainly later in its service life and again an internet search will reveal some photos of this airframe then we're on to Norwegian uh, F-16 again there's evidence to support these aircraft with and without I believe the strengthening plates so I'd have to go back and check on those photos that I've seen on the internet just to make sure but like we said references your friend with these to the page we've got Danish one and these get quite weathered as well there's some interesting pictures of E603 showing some really really severe weathering of that dark, uh, the gunship grey upper surfaces Again, I couldn't find any substantive evidence to suggest that this one would have the uh, scab plates on the top, but again, do your research before entering the rabbit hole. Last example in the kit is a Portuguese F-16. Now this won't have the strengthening plates and I've seen the photos of this. Uh, it does have the searchlight in the nose as does the Norwegian and Danish examples. And this is the one where it uses the fin base that is supplied in the kit and we'll look at that in a sec but it isn't shown on the instructions and that could in theory relatively easily be turned into a US Air Force ADV, ADF ADV as well. On the back we've got a brief stencil map in uh, lower upper port and starboard profiles. In each of the kits, the C and the A, there are two decal sheets included. The smaller one on the left hand side is for the weaponry and fuel tanks, while well, the one on the right uh, includes the abundance of stencil markings, in flight refueling, and walkway stencil data, along with the main individual aircraft uh, insignia and squadron badges, etc. Printed by Cartograph, designed by FCM, from what I've seen on the internet doing a brief search, they're bang on. No problems uh, with anything there. If you want to build anything that's depicted in the kit, then no aftermarket's required. But there are some interesting marking options out there for this airframe. And uh, as the F-35 enters service with a lot of these air forces, then these airframes have been passed around the world. So you think, I think you've got people like Jordan now using those as well etc so very very interesting topic and a very interesting subject and Kinetic need to be applauded for retooling the earlier kit readdressing it and bringing that back to the market so looking at the plastic this is Sprue B I'm not going in any particular order but it's nice to follow on from what I was discussing about the Portuguese example and the parts B2 and B4 which aren't marked on the instructions is the fin base to use with the standard A tail for the Portuguese ADF. The moulding is superb and when you catch the light the rivet detail and panel line and engraving is as good as anything you can see from the likes of Tamiya. Rivet detail is restrained and quite nice and we've got the vents and other grills and fasteners all depicted quite nicely and where needed we do have some raised detail so it would have been nice if we could have perhaps had open speed brakes and just remember when you're gluing the fuselage halves together that they shouldn't be glued tight shut at the end of these speed brakes there will be a slight gap wing inner panels Again, showing all that lovely fastener detail. And on the blind sides, there's limited amount of ejector pin marks. Nothing that I can't really feel there that's going to perhaps hinder the fit of the parts in any way. So this is frame or sprue C, and we have the cockpit and the forward fuselage. So clearly there's a F-16B or a two-seater in the offing at some stage in the way they've molded this and unfortunately they have missed that slightly upward angle of those leading edge 
slats that are actually molded in place. These are these Baycan radar warning receivers that are going to have to be removed for all the examples that are depicted in this kit. I saw a little bit of work there and it might have been better perhaps to have had those as an add-on part. As you can see the plastic is extremely thin replicating the Falcon's thin wings and that's going to take some work to carefully remove those and then some rescribing to complete and rework the panel detail in those areas. Static discharging whips um, mounted on the wings, I don't think they're going to survive the build process but nonetheless you could perhaps put some carrier protectors, card protectors over those to try and keep them intact, they're a bit over scale. I um, think probably I'll cut those off and replace those with toothbrush bristles at some point. But some framework there for the inside of the canopy and we have the single seat cockpit tub which features some exquisite rendered detail, raised surface detail there for the instrumentation. So Sprue D seems to carry a lot of the items in the kit and it's quite strange here to see that we've got the IFF or bird slicer aerials actually on a mounting plate. Something kinetic might be hinting at as a future release. We've got that lovely center line fuel tank which is nicely rendered. We have got the two earlier and later type gun muzzle with the extra gas vents present and we have a lovely center console and heads up display area some fantastic detail um, rendering on those. We have the different fin bases, ventral strikes, different fairings for the tail and then we have those flaps, undercarriage bays and those panels for the round the nose. Got ham targeting pods there so definitely Looking at a block 50 perhaps coming along at some point. And we've got a lot of smaller details, aerial fits, things like that on there as well. So just having a brief look at that sprue with those combination of tails, I think it's fairly safe to say that you could probably build out of either of these two kits any of the small mouth Pratt & Whitney engined airframes. So I might have to just refresh my memory on some of those but we've got a number of instrument panels there as well so you've got three included on these sprues where my fingers are. So we're definitely going to get a B or a D or even an F maybe as well. So that's going to be something to look forward to. I think that's a market that's been missed certainly by Tamiya and the Hasegawa kit. He's getting on a bit now, but nonetheless still builds up relatively well. So we've got some lovely detail there on the insides of the nose gear bay doors and the wheel wells. So all in all, it looks superbly tooled. Extremely well detailed in terms of engraved panel lines and rivets. So the only problem that I really don't like it when manufacturers break the Falcon nose in two. You can understand why they do it but it does make it a little bit difficult with the seam up the middle certainly with the lightning conductor strips being there as well so they'll have to be replaced out of very very thin stretch sprue and a touch of Tamiya extra thin. So we have two sprue F's in the kit obviously port and starboard but again two ejector seats, two rudder pedals etc. If I was a gambling person I would say that there's a two-seater not far off. Large surface tailplanes only, so the smaller Block 5 units not included in the kit, but then it's not manufactured as, as that. We've got a number of wheel patterns there, so you've got early, late. Obviously the, undercar the undercarriage changed on the Falcon as the airframe matured, uh, carry extra weight, hence the bulged undercarriage doors which we'll have a look and see if they're included anywhere in this kit. Nonetheless everything looks really superbly detailed and it is, looks as though it's going to be 
a really straightforward build if slightly a bit of work to get an A from this tooling. Weapons as described in the instruction book the sidewinders are broken down to cater for the different style of seeker head and body shape and just having a look through there to see if there's anything weird and wonderful and there's some strange looking devices on there that I'm not too familiar with but I'm sure everything will become apparent in future boxings and we've certainly got high speed anti-radiation missile perhaps there in a number of parts. Turning back to aircraft related items and we have the sprue that contains the engine feathers and petals for this Pratt & Whitney unit so they're quite nice and we do have the bulged undercarriage doors to cater as we would see in the block 40s and later 30s for that wide track undercarriage. We have some general exhaust area details and this small mouth intake. We have first stage compressors and the intake itself which has got the mounting for the side chin mounted pylons which are included in the kit there for the sniper pods etc found on the Falcon. Indeed those pods are included on sprue A so we have a lightning pod there in its various guises and a sniper pod and some other ALQ pods there, jammers etc. The last sprue in the kit are the clear pads. Just remove these from the bag and they are wonderfully clear and yes there is a centre line I think very very yes there is a centre line in the cockpit main cockpit glass that's going to need polishing and sanding out and I actually think it's on the inside which would make it even worse so it would be interesting to see once we get this on the bench we certainly have the glazing there for the sniper pods and other bits and pieces so it'll be interesting to see as we go into the block 40 kits whether we've got the wall hood or the wide angle raster so we'll uh, we'll have a look and see what we make of those as and when the build progresses this is a sort of extended review and we're just quickly going to look at the F16C in the sister boxing which is K48102 as the kit plastic is identical so it is just going to be the build sequence and that varies with the different options but we have some quite attractive markings in this kit so we have the have glass scheme from the Ohio Air Guard there which is just lovely and we have a block 25 Minnesota Air Guard and the Texas Air National Guard as well in the traditional three colour scheme found on the earlier 16s. Overall the kit's identical plastic wise. Uh, this time the decals are indeed printed by Cartograph again and designed by Fighter Town. So there are essentially all intents and purposes aftermarket decals. So these are brand new kinetic releases and their tooling cannot be faulted 100% up there with the big boys. Having built the very first kinetic kit way back which was their F84 Thunderjet quickly then followed by their F16s in the first issues which these kits I must stress have no relationship to whatsoever. Kinetic of a company have bloomed and blossomed to where they are now and they're certainly up there with the big boys and some of the topics that they bring out in the subject matter is unbelievable as well. The strengthening plates that are found on these F-16s are not included in either kit and that's going to be a bit of a bugbear for your F-16 enthusiasts such as myself as now I've now got to go and source those from an aftermarket uh, sort of um, manufacturer and so like I said Cross Delta or I think Fighter Town do so. Nonetheless I think the A is going to be a bit of a challenge to build an accurate A with having to backdate 
the fuselage and fill in other bits and pieces. Clearly the kit has been designed for multi-boxings. Can't blame Kinetic for that, it keeps the cost to us down. It does mean that to do that earlier MLU aircraft you're going to have to put some work in to remove those beer cans on the leading edges of the wings and certainly that may be the case for some of these earlier Block 25 aircraft as well in this US Air Force boxing. So I strongly recommend that if you're embarking on one of these F-16 builds that you get one of the multi pictorial F-16 Viper guides that are available out there. They're going to be invaluable source of reference for these kits. They're a minefield going through with things like intakes and engines. So it would be interesting to do your due diligence and do your research before you start off with one of these kits. It would be all too easy to make quite an easy mistake and end up with something that's not quite right. Overall I think the build is going to be not challenging but it's not going to fall together. You're going to need to work at these but the results are going to be rewarded with probably the best F-16 C, early C and A that's available on the market. So well worth the extra time just to get things right. So that's it from me but before I go I must stress my special thanks and a massive thank you for kinetic models for the review kits. I can't wait to get these on the bench and in fact probably going to start it not long after you've watched this. I must thank Kinetic because they've agreed to sponsor the video build and supplied the material and the kits to do that. So thank you Vinnie, thank you Raymond and thank you Sylvia. Uh, it's uh, an honour to be involved with the brand and build your products. So from me, stay well until next time, look after yourselves and uh, we'll see you in the video build of Kinetic's 148 scale new tools F-16s.